the atmosphere inside Eden Park on Saturday was something to behold, mate. It was just, it was unlike a New Zealand rugby test, anything that you've been to, it really, you know, like just there was happiness and joy at a game of rugby in New Zealand. You never see that. You know, when the All Blacks play, Chris, all you get is a bunch of moaners sitting there going, oh, we don't fucking, you know, we didn't play well, we don't score enough points with this, with bollocks, with that. It was just, it was actually fun. I don't know how many times I've said was that he, about a game he, of rugby. Was the age, was the age totally different. Um, the age, different. age was different. Demograph was different. Um, the um, So it was a lot more kids. And I've just spoken to Mel Robinson about this, you know, who won a couple of World Cups. And she said, mm. you know, the ticket prices are cheaper so that a different crowd can go. But, you know, because they combined all of that, it was a nice fine day. You had, you know, everyone was given poise as they walked in so you can wave those around. Just... And, and looking around me, there just wasn't the amount of people drinking. So, you know, maybe because the queues are always too long at Eden Park, but it's just a different vibe and atmosphere. Helped, of course, because they won, you know. But it just even then, you know, the singing, the dancing, the chanting, all of that kind of stuff. It's just, yeah, it's actually, it actually really good fun. You know, that's just what I, I don't go to an all-black test to have fun. Well, that won't be the feeling at Twickenham on Saturday when I'm there because it'll be full of uh, your usual demographic and people getting up every 10 minutes to go to the bar. It's one of the real bugbears of, of international sport at the moment is people's inability to, uh, to, to to make a pint last. They seem to have de- all developed bladder problems. Chris, so another weekend where everyone plays everyone. Italy beat Australia, Ireland beat Fiji, England wallop Japan, Wales get up over an Argentinian side that had just beaten England, France inch out South Africa, the All Blacks stutter again against Scotland. I don't know what to make of it, mate. I mean, last week, France beat Australia, Ireland beat South Africa, All Blacks beat Wales, Argentina beat England. So again, are we in a position where we just don't know who the best teams are? Well, the Irish will tell you that they just keep on winning, which is what they did. I mean, in their own words of Andy Farrell, they were awful. Now, if you're awful and still win 35-17, I know it helps at the moment because every time Fiji go on the field, they, they, they start with 15, and within minutes, they're down to either 14 or 13. So it's always a help. But, you know, they still got that W. So I, I'm still going to be waving the flag for the Irish because I think they do have some strength in depth. It was quite interesting, you know, when the, uh, when the call came into the, uh, to the, to the police service of Scotland today that, uh, that there were 15 missing persons uh, at Murrayfield, <laughs> uh, and for 15 minutes they were missing. But amazingly, they were discovered just before the end of the match. Yes. Uh, I, I do not know what's going on with with your All Blacks at the moment. Bowden Barrett spent the entire match kicking balls into not particularly interesting areas and then hitting rucks as if he's a, a prop forward. He seems to be playing a very different game to the Bowden Barrett we always used to lord and say this is the best player on the planet. I just don't get, get it what's going on with him. Uh, in contrast, Finn Russell, who of course uh, couldn't be picked by uh, Greg Townsend because basically can't control him, uh, put on a much more, uh, you know, uh, well thought out tactical plan, and you know, for those 50 minutes when you decided to let them play, uh, he did some good stuff for them. But uh, I don't know what's happened with Bodie, mate. Uh, any clues? Oh, well, I mean, you know, the, part of it is that you know the positions he's playing. Is he a first five? I mean, remember he was. Then he went to Japan. Then he came back for the Blues. Didn't hardly play. They played him at fullback. Then we put him back at first five. Now he's a fullback again. And I just wonder, and look, and, 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 and I actually wonder whether that is actually a problem with the All Blacks and the chopping and changing all the time. Look, how many how many times have we put out the same side this year? I don't think we've put it out back to back yet. I don't think it's a really good idea to do what you did at Scotland, which gave them a lot of heart, uh, and then think you can turn up at uh, Twickenham with, with your best 15. Yeah, hopefully Brody will be back to, 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 to add uh, to your line-out present because England will no doubt go in with three line-out forwards. But, you know, you can't just turn up and hope to produce a performance that's going to beat an England team that has started to look a little bit like the, the, the sort of team you want, you want to go to the World Cup, which means, you know, two ball-carrying props in Genji and Sinclair who can actually get over the game line. And, and you know, some players like Freddie Stewart at fullback who have a little something in attack. And I do say a little something because... He is going to be picking large people to run at your large people. So it's going to be a kick fest, which won't be great to watch. And for those people paying probably need 200 quid uh, to watch it, it will be a little bit of a, 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 a will, will some rugby break out in a minute. And, and I know that sounds like I'm underselling the game. And it is the one game 
that everybody in England is going to be concentrating on. Be, you know, it's, it's fantastic to have the All Blacks at Twickenham. But I have great fears that the type of uh, feast we're going to be uh, given is going to be very limited and a bit repetitious. Chris Jones, Times, Times Online, RugbyPass.com. France versus South Africa. Let's look at that game from the weekend because you've got two of the giants of the game, the best team this part, in this part of the world, given the fact that they're world champions. They did beat us. They split the series with us. You've got France where everyone's touting. I and mean, this is a game that where everyone at the next year's World Cup could easily be a final. Down to 14 again with the Detroit. Again, a red card. Chris, what do you say? I mean, that's a red card. And the players, and which is so frustrating now, if they don't get it through their dumb heads, then this is going to be a World Cup dominated by red cards, yellow cards, or basically 14 against 15. It is a great worry, and it's a serious, serious concern because, look, you can point at the referees and say, look, they don't get everything right. Well, that's not surprising. But, you know, with all the videos around, do players really think they can get away with flying horizontally into, into a breakdown head first and headbutting an opposition player? Yeah, even in the 70s, when most of, this, most of the players got away with that sort of thing, that probably would have been spotted. You have, the players have to educate themselves to stop putting the referee in a position where he can pull out a red or a yellow card. And this is a recurring theme that we've had for some time now, but the players don't seem to be learning. I mean, DuPont, that was just stupid. He knows the danger of going up for, for, for a ball he's not going to win. Let the guy catch it. Tackle him when he gets to the ground. He's not going to lose that much ground by doing that, is he? But no, he puts himself into a situation where the referee can send him off. And then, and worst of all, you end up with a Razzie Erasmus tweet video. Yeah, I mean, yeah. anything in the game that can keep that off the airways, please. <laughs> it is just incredibly... Yeah. Well, Chris, what you've got is you've got a, you've the, got this dichotomy, mate, between half of the rugby audience is sitting there screaming and yelling and, and that, oh, that's just they're making it soft, the game's going soft and all of that, and, the, 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 and then the powers that be saying, listen, if we don't protect the heads, we're going to get absolutely sued and the game won't go ahead. There is no middle ground here. People can't seem to compromise on this. Yeah, look, you have to understand, uh, as the, the lawmakers, I hope, will understand this, that there is a, a fast-moving game of contact sport in which sometimes a lowering of height, a failure to, to take into consideration the speed you're traveling at and the person coming at you, and you make a mistake. There should be, this is where I know the 20 minute red card is getting a lot of airing at the moment because some of these red cards are people making, you know, poor decisions, not in the form of a really bad decision, <laughs> like a Peter uh, Steph Detroit made, which was just basically an assault on another person. And yeah, you know, there's no 20 minute red card for that. You could have looked at the one that DuPont gave away and said, that is just a stupid error. It's dangerous. You're off for 20 minutes. You know, that's a 20 minute red card. There has to be some kind of flexibility. Or we are going to, as you say, end up with a World Cup in which the team that manages to keep a, around 14 players on the pitch will probably beat the team that's got 13 players on the pitch, particularly if Fiji are involved. And, you know, Vern Cotter must just be banging his head against the nearest palm tree because these guys will not learn. And they're the great, the greatest example of players failing to understand the current laws of the game. But they are, there's no excuse for the guys who are totally professional in everything they do and spend their entire lives preparing to play for international rugby, as we will see when England and New Zealand run out on Saturday, you have to hope that those guys are going to make decisions which 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 are warranted in the heat of a battle, because if they can't make them, they shouldn't be playing. If you cannot, as a coach, rely on your 15 players to make the right decisions, then you are going to really hamper your team's chances, not only of getting a win in an autumn international, but when it comes to the World Cup, you could cost your country the possibility of, of, of lifting the cup, as we know from Lydia Thompson, against the black ferns it's it's as, it's as hard and as harsh as that but the players have to learn the lessons that we are seeing every weekend because you're right the fans are fed up with this finally then all right and quickly give me who is the best team in the world or give me your top three who are the top three teams right now after two weekends or three weekends of international rugby where the north plays the south who are the three best teams the three best teams are ireland uh, followed by france Followed by New Zealand. There you are. You make you make the top three. But I, I tell you what, Italy are pressing you hard now for that spot. 